No. No, I'm not going to do it. No. So, yeah, there's, there's so much space here. There is so much room. It's great. Oh, God, have I come around to liking C5s? Oh yeah, imagine if I came round at the end of this, I started the video off ripping into it, and at the end of it I go, oh, I really like those, I'm gonna buy one. So this is the bottom intercooler hose, and if we thought the top one might be full of oil, this one is almost certainly gonna be full of oil. And in fact, to the point, I think I need to get my oil catch can. And laying in the oil catch can, I have an existing Citroen CX LHM filter, which is broken, and the moon disc that goes in the bottom of the reservoir, which is just knackered. So that's going to go in the bin. So yeah, I would imagine that when I undo this, all sorts of gack is going to fall out of it. Bearing in mind, there's so much of it under here. But I think, I, I, so far, Delightful car to work on. I know it sounds some mental saying that, and I am very, very uh, lightly into the job at the moment. But yeah, so far, I've done the boot boot struts as well. I was going to film it, and then I thought, now nah, Ian and Carly already filmed it, and theirs is far more enjoyable than mine would be. So I know they didn't actually change them, but um, it was pretty uneventful, really. Moment of truth. Hey. Oh, there's a bit. Hey, that could be much worse. That could be much, much worse. Like I say, this car does drive okay. Um, the first time I put my foot down in it, when I drove it, it smoked like bilio. I gave it some beans for a while, and then after that, it stopped. I know we did a few long journeys in it, which I imagine this car would be quite good at. So, yeah, so that's the bottom intercooler hose. Now the intercooler itself, there we go. See? So at the top is how it's supposed to be, all clean and clear and like a radiator, and then down the bottom, ah, no air going to be going through that. So think of the ponies that will be unleashed when I clean that out. So that's some form of cooler because it's not in the clip. <laughs> nothing's in the clip. There's clips for everything and nothing's in it. Everything's just loose. Yeah, there's supposed to be some screws along the bottom here that hold the bumper on as well, by the look of it, and they're all missing. Yes. That is the power steering hose. So that's not a massive problem. Um, what, I do, what I don't really want to do is disturb the suspension. I have got the software. The thing is, on one of these, on, a, on an old Citroen with LHM, if you disturb the suspension somewhere, it's a case of undoing some pipes and some valves, and manually it will sort itself out. This, you have to plug it in. You can't even depressurize this without a laptop. On a normal BX, Xantia XM, 12 mil spanner, quarter turn, and you've depressurized it, as I did in the BX video recently. And on this, you've got to plug it in. You've got to plug it in to check the level. That's, you, know, you have to have it depressurized, and at a certain height, you check the level in the reservoir. I mean, the idea being that it's much less labor intensive. You don't, once you do it, you don't need to do it again for a long time. But if I go pulling the suspension apart on this, I will need to. So I'd rather not disturb any of that. I don't think I'll need to. There's a Jubilee clip here, which almost certainly isn't original, but that will mean that I can pull this out of the way. And if I undo something around here, there we go. I think I'll be able to move these out of the way enough. So yeah, that should be okay. Oh, it's not looking too bad so far. I mean, it's taken me far longer than it would normally take anyone to do this, but I'm stood talking to a camera. So what shall I do? I'm going to have some lunch in a minute. And before I do that, I'm going to drain the remains of the cooling system, which will almost certainly make a huge mess. There we go. Please do not leak all over my floor. See if there's any antifreeze in this as well. Whoa, don't you dare! Cecily, stop it! Damn it.
Why do they do that? Right, I think that hose has stopped, which means I can try and be clever. Oh! Oh, there we go. Well, there's a bit of there's a bit of antifreeze in that, but not a huge amount. In fact, not a lot's come out either. That's not as many liters as I was expecting. And there's no drain on the bottom of this radiator, which is stupid. Most of the old Peugeots and Citroëns of this era had had a drain on. Got that. It's not been apart for a long time. Maybe since 2001 or 2002 or whatever it was. God. Nah, it's just tight. There's a big vat of coolant somewhere in this cooling system and it's waiting for me. It's suddenly going to go, surprise, and then splash everywhere. See, I could be wrong. Does that not look better like that? And if the lights weren't so big, if they were kind of like that, and then there was a bit more and it, and it carried on across there, and it just wasn't so big. I mean, it's, C5 is so large here. In fact, the windscreen should have been further back. And it's, you know, the sides and the windows are so high and the wheels are so small. It's a hateful design. Yeah, so again, you don't technically have to remove all this to do a clutch. But <laughs> I know the chap who's buying it. I want it to be a good car for him. And I think if a car like this has survived this long, bit of water there, um, you know, if it's, if it's survived as long as this one has, let's preserve it, you know? And I can't get around the back of it either because my workshop is a, a bit of a tip and the C5 is so big that it's blocked the access around the back of it. Oh, God. Normally there's a TVR on the ramp and TVRs are the yittle. They are not large cars, but a C5 is. Whoa! Oh, well, there's that vat of water I was waiting for. Um, so, yes, next day, pick up where we left off, basically. I can't even remember where that was. I took the front bumper off, arch liner's airbox, some pipe work, some trim, and then stood farting around a bit, I think. I think the next thing to do is to remove everything on top of the gearbox. So that's the starter motor, that's the um, gear cables, the slave cylinder that operates the clutch. I'm hoping I can remove the slave cylinder as a complete unit from the gearbox, not touch any of the pipe work, and that would mean I wouldn't have to bleed it back in again. I may still change the fluid at a later date, but Bearing in mind that it's done with the brake fluid, it makes sense to do that when you're going to do the brake fluid as well. Um, so I think I'll see if I can get that out. I've never played with a hydraulic clutch on anything with a Citroen badge before, or a Peugeot badge. Uh, all the ones I've grown up with and uh, learnt my way on have cable operated clutches. No BXs have hydraulic clutches. So, um, yeah, I don't know how all that comes apart, but hydraulic clutches are pretty simple. All the TVRs use them, or most of them. So, um, yeah, I think that's the next thing to do is to everything on the top of the gearbox except the gearbox mount, because if I take that off, it will fall out on the floor. And then it's underneath pipe work, gearbox oil, drive shafts out. That's going to mean splitting the bottom ball joints off, which is going to be fun because they're the same as a BX, which is, yeah, that's going to be great. Um, and yeah, hopefully I get this bloody gearbox off fighting against it today you know the, the times when you start to work on something you think i really can't be bothered i'm in that zone today so there we go so there's the clutch slave here this all right shall i just take advantage of the fact this is a magnet there we go so yeah that's the cylinder this is the pipe work coming into it there is a bleed nipple on the end um and that to me looks like it just pushes is that the 
Yeah, that's the release arm there. So it looks to me like it just slots into the gearbox. And uh, when you press the pedal, um, the cylinder on the pedal end forces all the fluid out of that cylinder. The piston forces all that fluid out of that cylinder. It comes down the pipe and it forces it into this cylinder, which causes this to push out. So it's an equal and opposite reaction. And that pushes against this and that disengages the clutch. I wonder if you can see the clutch through the hole. Oh, yes. Yes, you can. Just about. That's in there. That's the clutch. That will be coming out soon. So, yes. Um, yeah, there's the uh, battery uh, terminal and everything. That pipe still to be done. There's still some bits underneath. We'll, we'll tackle those separately. Um, there's some bolts here. There you go. So, there's one two three which are, are they torx or allen i think they're allen actually um those are not gearbox bolts the gearbox bolts are these m10 bolts here 17 mil head these are for the starter motor so you remove those three bolts there and the starter motor which is here will just withdraw and i'm hoping i'll just withdraw it and pull it back and leave it to one side um and just leave it dangling there and the gear cables are at the back there. So there's a, a mechanism at the back. And there's nothing magnetic here whatsoever. And the front end is plastic and aluminium. How does that work? Does that work? Here we go, yeah. So here's the gear cables. So you can see that's that's how the gears are selected. And that one will do fore and aft. The one on the right does. No, left and right, sorry. And this one will do fore and aft. Now that does look the same. Oh, the light's gone. It will be in pieces as well. Look. Oh. But yes, that gear, those gear cables have got to be removed. Um, they're the same gear cables as, well, they appear to be the same as in a Peugeot 406 <coughs> donor car that I've got outside. Don't worry, the donor is it's dying in the name of a good cause. And uh, I remember looking at those thinking, how would you get those off? And then I did. I got them off successfully, but I've forgotten how I did that. So I've got to go through that process again. Um, so how does that slow cylinder come out? It looks to me like it just... So I've never taken one of those off before. All these years of prattling around with cars, I've never had cause to remove one of these. I've never owned a Citroen with a hydraulic clutch long enough. It looks like you just push it that way and lift it out. But I'll be buggered if I can. Ah. Oh. Great success. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's a really clever design. It just pushes in, compress the spring, twist, let go. Done. Now the one thing you don't want to do, oh actually I don't even need to disconnect that at all from there, I have to put it on side. So there is the clutch slave. The one thing you don't want to do is go and push the pedal now. Because it'll go <laughs> We might not do it that dramatically, it might just go and then a lot of fluid come out and then you have to buy a new slave cylinder. Which would be annoying. Well that's that, that's brilliant. It's amazing how much of this is familiar territory to the uh, to the BX, because of course the DW, uh, which this is, and the petrol variant, the EW, um, which was used in vehicles like the well, C5 petrol, 206 GTI, the C4, I had a C4 VTF, um, that was a, an EW10, two litre. Uh, although they aren't XU engines, they do share qu quite a few parts. And quite a lot of the DNA, you can tell they're related. Um, I think the DW and EW sit more upright. If I remember rightly, the XU sits at the XU being the engine. I'm talking here like everyone knows. The XU being the family of engines before this. That was the um, the ones used in the BX, the 205 GTI, the Xantia, etc. Um, obviously, apart from the HCI's. Um, but yeah, the, the you know, 1905 CC, it's like a sort of almost legendary engine size. Um, that was a, an XU. If it was a petrol, it was an XU, and if it was a diesel, it was an XUD. 
you know, I got home last night and I did, I did some editing on the first bit of footage I did on this, which might be part of this, well, it won't be part of this video, it'll be part of a subsequent one, because I've done one hour, 17 minutes of footage. I've got one of the hoses for the power steering here that is going to get in the way. Yeah. Yeah, there's a hose here for the power steering. There was, there, was, there was another one which I showed yesterday underneath that had a Jubilee clip holding it uh, to the um, end of the, well, effectively this pipe here, the one that sits in none of the clips, um, which is effectively a cooler. It runs across the front there to allow the air to cool it down. Not a bad idea. Um, that one's easy enough to disconnect. This one, if I want to disconnect that one, I've got to disconnect it from the pump itself at the uh, pump connection which is a, a little bit riskier, but I, th I, th I think it is just gonna have to happen, isn't it? It's riskier because if I disconnect it and then reconnect it and it doesn't take the seal properly, I know sometimes with these pipes, you can't get the seal on its own. It's not always just an O-ring. That would be stupid, but it would also be my luck. So We've got two hoses here. So that one, we know this one disconnects because there's a Jubilee clip under there. Not very original, but it'll do. This one, these pipes here go all the way back to the steering rack. So they go right back along the shell, all the way along the back on the subframe to the steering rack. Where the other end of this pipe goes up here. Can't see it because of bad light. There you go, it goes here. So if I undo this union, which I, I will probably have to do. Obviously, I'm going to lose the power steering fluid, but then it doesn't hurt to change it anyway. I'm going to be playing around with Lex here on this thing, I think, because um, if I lose a bit of fluid, that's the suspension fluid, and that level needs setting with Lex here. So, yeah, that'll be that. But the thing is, if I don't disconnect it, I mean, I have unplugged it from the front of the gearbox there, but it's just going to get in the way, isn't it? I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet Trying to manoeuvre a big heavy gearbox off of a, an engine when you've got it on the splines and everything. And then you're trying to get around stuff like that. It's just stress you don't need. I don't know what coolant was in this, but it was yellow. Never seen yellow coolant before. It does appear to have worked. They removed my manky rag. I seem to remember. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. It's very easy. Well, I'll tell you that. There you go. It's just a plunger on the top of the, the head where it clips over the ball joint. You just push the plunger, squeeze that, pull the cable off. So that is gear cables disconnected and free of the gearbox completely. Uh, the uh, power steering hoses will be done when I'm back at the top. Right, so you've got gearbox mount there. Fine, not a problem. Uh, let me just have a quick scoot over to make sure I've not missed anything down here. So that connector there was for the TDC sensor. So that's disconnected. There's a bolt there, bolt there. So how many bolts hold the gearbox to the engine? They've got one, two three probably something so probably four i would say it's going to be four directly to the block and then there's this big metal bracket along the bottom which is interesting like a big strengthener and i imagine there'll probably be something in that as well that's pretty much all of it under here so yeah Right, so now we're moving underneath the car. And uh, yeah, a fair bit to do under here. Uh, I can see why the book time on these, despite the fact book times are a, bit, a little bit misleading. I think the book time is something like six hours. You can see why garages price themselves out of doing these. because They don't want to be prattling around with, oh God, with Citroen computers and all that malarkey. There's LDS. It's not as cool, my God. The reservoir's emptying. 
Why? I think we're going to be changing LDS fluid for this gentleman as well. Oh, well, he needed a new reservoir full of fluid, didn't he? To be honest, it doesn't hurt. I mean, when was the last time this was changed? Um, yes, so I'm going to need the oil catch thing here. Oh, God. Oh, the Jeopardy. And we shall simply exchange. No. There we go. Yeah, this is why it's a six-hour job at most garages. Well, the guy who's bought this car's name is Phil. Phil, you are having a new tank full of LDS. It shouldn't even be coming out because I've got the clips on the other side. So it's obviously breathable, that system. So why do you have to take the lid off when you jack the car up? Stupid. Oh, that is minging, actually. And now you start dripping. I've been... Uh, Looking at this car briefly from uh, from underneath, and I don't think you have to drop that subframe. Um, I really don't want to because it will just be a pain. What I am hoping is that the gearbox can kind of wiggle off the end of the engine and then come this way and down because there's so much room in front of it. I can't see. I can't see why it wouldn't. Famous last words. Um, so the drive shaft needs to come off. You would imagine that the subframe can stay in place if you've got something like that that's removable. Because otherwise, why else would you make it removable if the subframe had to come off anyway? So, yeah. Okay. Oh, there's the drain for the gearbox, for the gearbox oil. Oh, that's some beefy bracing on that disc. It's time to get buzz out. <coughs> oh, wow. So that come off easy. <coughs> wow. It all just comes apart. It's even got retaining. No. Oh, it's dripped all down my arm, that. Right, okay, I'm sorry. Now we're getting into the realms of good engineering. So if I can take that bolt out completely. I've removed all the bolts from that heavy steel bar, right? I'm gonna, can you zoom in? There we go. This end, yes, heavy steel bar. Oh, this would be a pain to put in single-handedly. I wish they'd come up with some sort of ingenious... Oh, they have. Retaining clips to hold it in before you put the nuts and bolts in. Oh, but French engineering. Ooh. Retaining clips. 